morning traders. Welcome to the London Analysis on the 23rd of October. Just going to briefly go over the news and what kind of articles are coming out that could see uh, volatility in the markets. And then we'll switch over to the trading screens and go through the technical analysis. So on the live news feed, I look at the MyFX book one in the mornings, okay, just to find out what kind of high volatility uh, result, results are going to be coming out. But then I follow along with the results of those using the, the news pod that we share um, each day in the morning. So at the moment, the morning is fairly quiet for most of the pairs. However, there are a couple of high impact news articles on the uh, the pound dollar. There's basically Bank of England minutes, um, the Bank of England vote cut, uh, and basically they're happening in around 21 minutes. So that's that's 9:30 GMT. So depending on the results of those, we might see some uh, moves on the pound dollar. So want to be want to be quite careful with trading that pair. I even want to keep our risk as, quick, as, as short as we can. So they're the main articles coming out. So we might see some volatility on the pound dollar, but the rest should be fairly steady uh, throughout the morning as the the only news articles coming out after that are around sort of half two on the Canadian dollar. Uh, basically the, the Bank of Canada interest rate decisions come out and then the other announcements are far, far later. So a fairly steady day in terms of news. So fairly safe to be trading on a technical level today. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to shop, stop sharing this screen and I'm going to switch over to presentation mode. And then I'll share my screens and we'll go over the, the, the six major pairs. So, you'll be able to see my trading screens in a couple of seconds. So, we'll start off with the Euro dollar as always. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to go over the four hour chart to develop a trading bias for the morning. And then we'll go over to the 15 minute chart to look out for any entry points or potential trading opportunities. So, as we said yesterday, we've broken the, the previous highs four-hour chart giving us a, a nice strong bullish bias that's a, a nice long trading bias so we're looking to buy the euro dollar however towards the end of yesterday when this happened um, we used up the average daily range very quickly so there was nothing left to trade within the afternoon as you can see we've got 83 pips room up on the ADRs now so fairly safe to be taking some trades on the euro so we go over to the 15 minute chart to see what kind of setups we have waiting for us so if you remember what we said yesterday, we develop a trading bias on a 4 hour chart that tells us what direction we want to be trading in so we know that's long and what we do, we wait for a pullback against that profile to create pressure and the idea being when we create that pressure against the profile when it releases and go back up we want to catch that move as it happens. So we have got a good environment for a trading setup here and the reason why I say that is because we've got that pullback against the profile as fractals are being broken to the downside. So that means we can enter. Now, we want to enter the markets as and when the profile breaks back to the bullish side of things. Okay? So entry for me is generally the tip of the last fractal in the direction in which we wish to trade. Okay? So on this occasion, I'll be looking to go long at around 1.37793. Now, yesterday we went through sort of take profit and stop loss methods. The video should be accessible to you. But in a nutshell, stop losses are used a technique called chasing fractals. Now, there's a video on there. Have a look at that. If, it, if, if you're struggling to see the video or if there's any problems with vid the video, let me know. And I'll do another presentation to cover that method. But chasing fractals can be used to manage your risk, your stop losses, and also your take profits in, in effect. Okay? A 
Another way to take profits, of course, as I mentioned yesterday, is using the daily pivots for indicators as to when to exit, and also just using what's left of the average daily range. Okay? So, hopefully that'll make sense to you. If it doesn't, let me know, and I'll happily go over um, again anyway. But in any case, if I get any triggers and any trades, or you get any triggers yourself, let me know, and I'll go over in video just to just re-go over what I'll be doing um, on that trade in terms of take profit and stop loss, just to make sure that that's quite clear to you um, following the uh, the open house videos. So to recap the euro, we're looking to go long at 1.37793, and again, of course, I'll get that set up posted when we're done with the analysis. On to the pound dollar, similar story. Obviously, we broke the uh, the key highs yesterday with the NFP results. We have had a big retracement against that, but we haven't yet had any breaks of any lows on the four hour. So, for all intents and purposes, we're still looking fairly long bias on this pair. So, I'll be looking to buy this today. And again, we've got plenty of room left up in the average daily range. We've got 95 pips to go, so there's plenty of room to be trading there. So, if we go over to the 15 minute chart, now obviously, as you can see at the moment. We are looking very, very bearish. So normally there'd be a good entry point there, but because we've had these big spikes down, most likely in anticipation of the news releases, to get to an entry point we'd have to jump up by about 87 pips. Okay. So with that in mind, there's not really anything to be trading. Uh, there'd be no room left up in the average trade ranges, and it's going to take us a long way to get there anyway. So with the pound dollar, with that in mind, and also the fact that we have got some key releases coming out soon. With that in mind, I wouldn't look to trade this, not until later on. Now, what I want to see, I'd want to see a new lower high form, which as you can see, there is one forming on the current candle. Basically, a swing high is when you have a candle and then two lower candles either side. Okay, so as you can see, we've got two lower candles before the new one. So all we need is, a, is two lower candles to the right hand side of it and then you get a fractal form and then that gives us a new entry point then which is a much more realistic one to be aiming for. So for now, as I said, we're going to hold fire on the pound dollar and we're going to wait and see what happens. So, on to the Aussie dollar. You can see, while we've had this long term uptrend, we've finally broken down against that breaking the last lows to the downside okay so now our buyers on this pair would be to sell it so we go over to the 15 minute chart and as you can see we're already looking very very bearish indeed so you wouldn't want to be setting up any entries not until we have that pullback against the profile now another thing to notice as well is there's no room on the average daily ranges to the downside either so we're going to want to see a significant rise against the profile before we can consider any trades on that. So for now, I'll be sitting out on the Aussie dollar and waiting to see how the uh, the pair forms throughout the day. Moving on to the, ca the Canadian dollar, again, remember what we're looking for. We're looking at the fractals and we're looking to see in which direction those fractals have been broken. Okay. So while we had had a bit of a bearish start to the week with the... Uh, with the NFP figures, uh, we have actually had a bit of a reversal, strangely enough, following those figures. And in the last four hour candle, you can see we've broken the last high to the upside. Okay, so that's the strength of the dollar there, breaking against that. And also, many people might be uh, buying this pair in anticipation of some of the Canadian figures being released later on this afternoon. Okay, so for now, definitely looking at a long bias on the Canadian dollar. So we're going to head over to the 15 minute chart see what's happening over there and as you can see we've got this big long rally that's still potentially going on now so far it's been about 54 pips to the upside now what we want to see we want to see a potential break to the downside okay and then from there you could potentially find you an entry but again look at the ATRs there's only less well there's minus nine pips room left up in the average daily ranges now that's a good indication to me that we might not see much more of a rise in this so again like the Aussie dollar we want to see a big change against the profile uh, before we can look to trade this so again another one I'm going to be sitting out on until um, we get a bit more formation on the profile or we have a big reversal against that big move meaning we have some room freed up in the average daily range so again another pair to be sitting out of for now Onto the dollar Swiss 4 hour chart, you can see 
There's that big spike downwards from yesterday's NFP, breaking the last lows. Um, we've also got a higher, uh, sorry, a lower high formed this fractal here. So with that in mind, we're looking at a nice strong bearish profile. Okay, so we'd want to be selling this pair. So we head over to the 15 minute chart to have a look for any opportunities. And as you can see, we did have that pull against the profile with these fractals being broken to the upside. Okay, and then we jump back down, breaking the last um, low. So that would have been a setup, but we're a little bit late to catch up, and unfortunately. So what we'll do, we'll sit back and wait and see what happens. But we are short bias on the Canadian dollar, sorry, the, the, the dollar Swiss, looking to sell this. So we're going to wait for some more opportunities to crop up throughout the day, uh, rather than jump on a trade that would have already triggered. So finishing off with a dollar yen. Four hour chart, as you can see from yesterday, we smashed that we smashed the low barriers with the NFP. Uh, we yet to have any significant retracement on the four hour chart, so we're looking strong and bearish throughout the day. So that gives us a nice clear indication that we'd be looking for sales. However, note up for minus 27 pips in the average daily range. So again, unless there's a, a potential, yeah, a potentially big reversal on that, there's not really enough ADR to be trading that pair with today. Okay, so just to recap what we've said today then, the dollar euro, we're looking to buy it, and we have got a setup there already, so I'm going to get that chart posted. The pound dollar, we're going to be looking for buys on the pound dollar, but we have said, number one, we need to wait for the news to take place, so we know what it's doing, and also we need to see uh, some lower highs form, so we've got some entry points, rather than having to wait for an eight pip jump to get there. The Aussie dollar and the US dollar Canadian, we've said we're not trading because there's a lack of ADR or average daily range, so we need to wait for something to develop there. The dollar Swiss, there was a potential setup, but we've missed that unfortunately. So what we're going to do is just wait for a more, another pullback against the profile and then retrade that to the downside if and when we have an opportunity. And finally, on the dollar yen, again, we're looking short bias on there, but we're not looking to take anything due to a lack of ADR. So at the moment, the key pairs we're watching are the dollar Swiss and we're going to be looking at the euro in terms of that setup that I'll post shortly. So are there any questions on that guys or is that fairly self explanatory? Another thing guys, if you could, uh, obviously all the feedback we get from the service is great for us, it helps us out a lot. If you've got any suggestions let me know. But I'll be doing various different polls um, throughout the presentations so if you can vote on those polls for me. Just, it just gives me a bit of an outlook on, on, on how you guys feel about the service uh, and you know how you find in the open house. Alright guys, so I'm going to stop the recording there.